So, calculate the pH of a 0 0.10 molar, this time methylamine. Methylamine, which is CH3 NH2 solution. So a methylamine is just, just like an ammonia, except it has, instead of uh, taken out one of the hydrogens, and I've put a CH3 on there. And the Ka for methylamine is 4.38 times 10 to the negative 4. 4.38 times 10 to the negative 4. So I'd like you to see what this actually looks like, because I'm a big fan of structures. Um, NH3 looks like this, as you know, and it has a lone pair of electrons. Well, methylamine, it has its two hydrogens, not a problem, but now it has a CH3 attached to it. So it's the same thing. It's like an ammonia, a couple of lone, you know, has a lone pair there, but it, instead of an H, it just has that. It behaves exactly the same way. It's a base, pulls a hydrogen off the water to produce hydroxide. So let's write our major species. Well, we have the CH3. NH2, and we have our H2O. Well, 4.38 times 10 to the negative 4 versus 1.0 times 10 to the negative 14. Yeah, I think we can ignore the 1.0 times 10 to the negative 14 as a source of hydroxide. Most of the hydroxide in this solution is going to come from this. Weak base, but still a stronger base than that. So let's write our CH3 NH2 plus HOH, or you can write H2O, not a problem. Same equation plus water goes to CH3, NH3 plus, just add a hydrogen, stick a plus charge on it, plus OH minus. We have an initial, we have a change, we have an equilibrium. 0 0.10, nothing, 0, 0, before anything happens. As the system comes to equilibrium, this species disappears, this species appears, and this species appears. At equilibrium, we're left with 0 0.100 minus x. This doesn't matter, that doesn't matter. This is plus x, this is plus x. Now, we have 4.38 times 10 to the negative 4 is equal to this times that divided by that, x squared over 0 0.10 minus x, approximately equal x squared over 0 0.10. Now, when we do this, we end up with the following. Uh, when we do this approximation, we end up with x equal to 6.6 .6 times 10 to the negative 3. Let's check the validity of this. Let's see if our approximation here, from going from here to here, is valid. Well, 6.6 .6 times 10 to the negative 3 over 0 0.10 times 100 Guess what? It actually equals it equals 6.6%. 6.6% is too high. It's, uh, it's close to the 5, but it, it really is too high. Uh, that means that you have a choice. You can either, you have to go back, you can't use this approximation, in other words. You have to actually solve, I'm sorry, you have to solve this whole equation as it is. You can't eliminate the x from here. You have to solve this equation. You have to do it, either solve it as a quadratic equation, which is not a problem. I mean, it's easy enough to do. It's just numbers. You have a calculator. You can do it. Um, or I'm going to show you a method called the method of successive approximations, which is a really, really great technique if you don't want to use the quadratic. It's an older technique. It still works. There's a lot of computer programs that are actually based on this method of successive approximations. And here is how it works. Okay, so now let's go back, and we said that we have 6.6 .6 times 10 to the negative 3, right? So when we did this approximation of 4.38 times 10 to the negative 4 equals x squared over 0 0.10 minus x, approximately equal to x squared over 0 0.10, we got a value of our first value, we got 6.6 .6 times 10 to the negative 3 for x. Let me write x equals this. x equals 6.6 .6 times 10 to the negative 3. Okay, 
we checked this, 6.6 .6 times 10 to the negative 3, we divided by the 0 0.10 and we got 6.6%, .6%. that's too high. Instead of going back and solving this, here's what you do. You take this first value and you put it back in for x and you solve this equation again. In other words, you take 0 0.10, you divide, uh, you subtract 6.6 .6 times 10 to the negative 3, and you solve the equation x squared over the number that you get here when you subtract this from this, you solve this, and you get a second value for x. Now notice, I didn't put it here and here. That doesn't make sense. What I'm doing is I'm going to use an, a, this first value to get closer with a second value. I'm going to use the second value to get closer with a third value. When any two successive values actually match each other, that means I've hit my point. For those of you that are familiar with something called the Newton-Raphson method of solving for the roots of an equation, this is somewhat similar to that. You're basically just sort of converging on a value, and when that value, when two successive values are equal, that means you've hit your point. You're not going to go any further. So here we were slightly off. I use this to put it back into this one, leaving this alone. I solve for x, and a second value I get is x equals 6.39 times 10 to the negative 3. This is a pretty significant difference. This is, you know, fairly significant here. And now I check this one. Well, I actually don't really, I just stick it back into this again. I take 0 0.10 minus 6.39 times 10 to the negative 3 in the denominator. I leave the x squared on top and I solve this equation again. My third value that I get when I solve for x, I get x equals 6.40 times 10 to the negative 3. I stick this back in there, I do it again, I get a fourth value x equals 6.40 times 10 to the negative 3. Two values, one after the other match, I can stop there. x equals 6.40 times 10 to the negative 3. x happens to be my hydroxide ion concentration of 6.4 times 10 to the negative 3. Now let me see, how else did I handle that? And the pOH, the pOH which is the negative log of the 6.4 times 10 to the negative 3, gives me 2.19. And then pH is equal to 14 minus pOH. I end up with 11.8. That is my basic solution. So again, when you're presented with a value and you try to approximate it by leaving this x off, and it turns out that that x value is higher than 5% of the original value that you took it from, well, you can take the value that you got, stick it in there, just subtract it from that value in the denominator, run this calculation again for x, and just keep doing that over and over again. Whatever value you get, put it back in. When you get two values that are the same, that's when you stop. That is your value. You've converged on it. You've gone from if this is the real value, let's say you start it over here, you're going to bounce here, you're going to bounce here, you're going to bounce here, you're going to converge on it. It really is nothing more than the Newton-Raphson method. Um, or you can just solve the quadratic equation. It's up to you. Um, personal taste. I think it's sort of nice to do whatever you feel comfortable with because it certainly makes the uh, act of problem solving much more relaxing and much more enjoyable when you're, you're doing something that you like to do. Okay. So I'll go ahead and uh, we'll stop there for our discussion of weak bases.